Hi everyone, I'm Charmaine Marlowe. I'm the Associate Director of Alumni, Employer Collaborations and Projects at Western Sydney University. Welcome to the third session in our Skills Activate series, Harness the Power of LinkedIn. I'd like to begin by acknowledging the traditional custodians of the various lands on which we will meet today. I pay my respect to all elders past and present and extend that respect to any Indigenous people joining us. It's been great to connect with so many members of our alumni community over the past few weeks. Just please ensure you stay connected with us to learn more about future career development opportunities because there will be more, it's not over yet. Um, but yeah, thankfully we're not done. So it's my pleasure to introduce our presenter tonight, Amy Watson. Amy is the Principal Customer Success Manager at LinkedIn and partners with 24 institutions across Australia. Prior to LinkedIn, Amy worked in learning and organisational development for almost 10 years. Tonight, Amy is sharing her expertise with us about how LinkedIn can be leveraged to advance your career. So over to you, Amy. Thank you so much, Charmaine. And I am going to go ahead and share my screen so you can all see what I'm talking about. Um, excellent. So tonight we're going to be looking into a little bit around uh, LinkedIn and how you can start to leverage LinkedIn, maybe a little bit more strategically um, than how you have in the past. Um, as um, Charmaine kindly um, introduced me, my name is Amy Watson and I'm a Principal Customer Success Manager here at LinkedIn. Um, something that we like to do here at LinkedIn is um, share a fact about us that you won't see on my LinkedIn profile, which I'll share with you all post today. Um, a couple of things about me. So um, I am very much into neuroscience, uh, one of the skills that I'm currently trying to um, harness myself and advance myself on. I um, love Pilates and I'm also a mum. So there's three facts that you're not going to see on my LinkedIn profile. Um, maybe not yet, but probably I could update um, in the future. Um, let's have a bit of a dive into um, what today's session is going to cover. Um, and something that I thought I would share as well is um, I'm really keen to make this session as interactive as possible. Um, we are in webinar mode for those that may not be familiar with it. Um, there is um, a chat function, but you won't be able to take yourself off mute or um, view by camera today either as well. Um, so if you have any questions for me throughout the chat today, uh, throughout the presentation today, pop them in the chat. I'll keep an eye on the chat as I'm presenting and um, I'll try to get to as many as possible um, today as well. So I'm going to take you through a bit of an overview around what LinkedIn is. Um, we are going to explore your personal brand or your professional brand and how that aligns to LinkedIn. Um, building your professional network, um, how you can leverage LinkedIn to connect to different types of opportunity. And we're also going to explore um, the skills revolution that's currently going on at the moment and how and what you should start um, identifying and building um, skills in. So first of all, in the chat, I might get everybody to pop into the chat who currently has a LinkedIn profile. So pop in the chat, yes, why? Um, let's see how many of you have a LinkedIn profile at the moment. Cool, looks like most of you do. Awesome, great to hear. Um, I think with, um, not yet, okay, cool. Ali, we're gonna work on that tonight, hopefully. Um, <laughs> and um, lots of people want to be added. That's cool. You can add me. I can add you. I'll share my LinkedIn with you um, today. Um, but for those of you that don't have a LinkedIn profile, um, awesome that you've joined today. Um, Brian, I can see that you've said that you yours needs some work. I think um, mine probably needs a bit of work. I, I'm at the stage where I'm like, yeah, how do I rebuild it? So today, um, the purpose of today is to really give you some really great tips on what you can do to not only build out your 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 profile, but how you can use your profile to enhance your professional network and, and do other things on LinkedIn as well. Cool. Okay. Good starting point. Um, let's get to know a little bit about LinkedIn and who we are at LinkedIn um, uh, as a bit of a starting point. So LinkedIn is a social media platform. However, we are a little bit different to maybe some of your other social media platforms that we constantly use. Um, so we like to use a little bit of these analogies, having a look at some of our um, our friends in social media over here. Um, Facebook, if people still use Facebook, um, I like donuts. Um, TikTok, uh, Snapchat, I don't even know if people still use Snapchat. I, I don't have it. Um, watch me eat a donut. Instagram, here's a cool photo of my donut. 
Pinterest, he's a donut recipe. On Spotify, we're listening to donuts. And on WhatsApp, we're, we're sharing, does anyone want a donut? How we see ourselves as being a little bit different is on LinkedIn, um, we really pride ourselves on um, our members having a professional mindset whilst on LinkedIn. Um, and these are the analogies that we would hope that people think um, they would like to use while um, while tapping into LinkedIn as well. So I hope to operate a donut franchise one day. I'm looking for a job at a donut company. I have three years of experience making donuts. My top skills are donut production and sales. And here are three recommendations from some former donut colleagues. So we um, we find um, that it's professional. Oh, now you feel like a donut. Yes, me too. Um, uh, we really pride ourselves at, at LinkedIn um, through our security and through um, the way that our platform is built that our members um, should and um, try to have a professional mindset whilst on there. So why LinkedIn? Um, how does cre LinkedIn create value for you? Um, the answer to this question, um, I think we can really start to explore um, why you might want to start using LinkedIn by having a bit of a look at our economic graph. So at LinkedIn, we like to refer to something um, called the economic graph. And what that means is a whole heap of data points around um, our members and why we think that our platform is so valuable. Um, so LinkedIn has some really powerful data tools and insights that can help you connect to opportunity. And this starts with our professional community. Um, at the moment, we have just over 900 million members. Um, we are situated in, in over 200 countries and territories and 130 members a minute join LinkedIn. So that's a pretty remarkable um, uh, figure. I think that I'm continuously blown away that um, each minute there's 130 people joining. Um, in addition to having over 900 million members, um, we have representation from 57 million companies, um, 45 million job seekers um, are, are using our platform to find jobs each week. Um, there is representation of over 38,000 skills on our members' platforms, um, representation from higher education institutions, um, along with um, schools as well of over 120,000. And each year... Um, there's 358 billion pieces of knowledge which have been shared through the likes of um, posts, articles, um, and things like that as well. So in essence, um, pretty remarkable to see some of these numbers that are shared um, and how you can start to connecting to some of these opportunities. Um, we're going to explore that a little bit further today. So to get started... Um, I like to go through a bit of an overview of um, branding and um, I'll tie it all in together once we go through it. But I think what's really important is to understand what your personal brand and your professional brand are before you start rejigging or creating your LinkedIn profile as well. So let's start to explore that together. Um, a brand is a customer's promise to its customer. I mean, it tells customers what they can expect from a company's product and services. Um, so a good brand is really built around how it sh shows how it's unique from its competitors. We've all heard the good old saying of Nike versus Adidas. Personally, I'm a Nike girl. I can't remember the last time I bought anything from Adidas. Um, but everyone tends to have a preference between the Nike or Adidas. Um, but why do you choose one over the other? Is it the way that a Nike Air looks? Um, or is it the way that it's made um, versus an Adidas high top? Is it the three stripe versus the swoosh? Um, is it their advertising that lures you in or that you prefer? Or is it because your favourite athlete reps one of them? Um, what's the difference and why do you tend to lean towards one of the other? Much like Adidas and Nike, you have your own brand. Um, what your brand does is tells people what they can expect when they're working with you and around you. It shows how you're unique. And what's really cool is that you can shape your brand by the way that you present yourself to other people. So how does this link in to um, LinkedIn? Um, you have an opportunity to define your professional brand. So think about um, people that are around you, peers, um, your current employer, maybe academics, um, future employers, you have an opportunity now to think about what makes you unique 
Um, how will your employer, a future employer or a network decide to choose you over someone else? And what do you truly stand for? What's really important to you? So the questions that are on these pages, I'm going to share all of these slides with you to um, post today. Um, and what I would encourage you to do is before diving into your LinkedIn profile, that these are some really great questions that you can start to ask yourself around um, what your brand is and why or you're unique in comparison to other people. It'll really help you to build out your platform. In addition to that, we then um, dive into these particular areas as well. So the way that I like to do this is um, I'm a piece of paper type of girl, um, but if you um, prefer to do this on your computer, um, ask yourself those questions, um, type them out, write them out. I'd also encourage you to then go through um, these particular ones as well. So I tend to map out what skills do I have that are specific um, to either um, what I've learned at uni, um, what work experience do I have, what, what roles have I had and what skills do I think that I have um, into each job or class. Um, your network, um, how are you to be with around and uh, also to work with. Um, think about people that um, connect in your network or that you can really rely on. Um, and what are your areas of expertise and wisdom? Um, what's that information piece that you can really rely on as well? In addition to that, what, um, what are your values and your goals? So think about things that are really important to you and give meaning to your life. Um, these might not necessarily be related to work, but they could be things like you know, highlighted here around respect, honesty, goals, um, about caring and things like that as well. So what are things that you really value? And then um, note down a few goals. What, Where do you want to be or what do you want to be doing in two years, 10 years, or maybe it's even in 30 years' time? Um, because what this will help to do is really um, make a really robust profile that's going to last you a little bit longer, um, but also it helps people within your network and potential employers to really guide um, where you want to go in the future. So like I said, I'll share these ones with you. Um, but the next stage after this is once you've defined your professional brand using some of these guidelines, um, you can then go through and start creating your profile. So a, a question that we commonly get asked is, I've got a resume, how does LinkedIn um, differ um, in comparison to my resume? Um, LinkedIn is more than just a, a resume or LinkedIn is more than a platform just for the, then for applying for jobs. Um, think about leveraging LinkedIn to speak to all potential employers. Um, that might be one that is potentially on your bucket list to reach in 10 years time. Um, we tend to go a lot more into detail with things like um, adding skills in time, um, projects, interests, certifications, and a lot more other things. Um, you have the ability to be able to connect with other people, um, to interact with other people, to learn from other people and for other people to contact you. Um, and it also contains recommendations, endorsements, along with everything that you connect to as well. So um, when you engage with posts, that's connected to your profile um, on LinkedIn as well. So some key things to add, um, I have and will include in the follow-up email a one pager that goes through everything on your profile that you should be connecting to. Um, I will say since I started, I've been here for three years, um, but in the time that I've been at LinkedIn, um, the AI has become a lot more intuitive. It will help you fill in things um, as you're filling out your profile. So it isn't um, as much of a laborious task than what it used to be. Um, but work your way through um, using the little wizard that helps you to fill out your LinkedIn profile as you go along. Probably the hardest part of your profile um, would be your summary. So um, this little algorithm that we have put together over here is super helpful when you're putting together a summary. And if you map out your brand prior to, um, to doing this, it'll really help you to identify what are the key things that you should be adding into your profile summary as well. Um, your summary is the best place for you to communicate your professional brand and put your own spin on your experience. 
So it's usually the first point other than the banner or your profile picture or your name um, that people tend to go to have a look at um, to understand exactly who you are. So the way that we recommend that you do it, and like I said, definitely follow this little tool because it's super helpful. Um, the first one to two sentences should be about who you are. The three to five sentences that formulate underneath that, which formulates the bulk of your summary, um, should be about your experience, what your top skills are and what you're really passionate about. And then the last component should be about your future goals and how other members can engage with you as well. So I think the questions that I was showing you just before tend to actually lean into a lot of these things here. Um, and um, yes, you'll definitely get a link to watch this again, but this will also formulate um, how you can build that out as well. So who you are, what your experience is, and then a little bit about like what your future could potentially look like as well, where you want to go, what's important to you at the end there as well. Cool. Okay, so your profile's all schmick, ready to go. Um, uh, and now we're going to start to have a bit of an exploration around how can you build out your professional network now that your profile doesn't have to be perfect, but what can you start to use LinkedIn for to, to start to network to opportunity? Okay, so the first cool stat that I have for you is 50% of hires result from a personal connection that you have with someone on LinkedIn. Um, I've already seen um, a couple of people were posting, let's add, let's add each other or let's build on our network. Um, that's a, a really great idea um, because of this particular stat, especially for people if you're looking for jobs or your next opportunity. Let's have a bit of a look at what the network actually means on LinkedIn because I think sometimes it can be a little bit confusing. Um, everyone has a network, um, though you may not realise that networking occurs every time you meet new friends or acquaintances. Maybe you volunteer in your community or through another social activity. Um, networking is a really key factor in career advancement. And like I said, 50% of workers currently employed found their jobs through a personal connection. Your network consists of strong connections, the people that you know well and interact with often, as well as weaker connections, acquaintances, or people that you may not know personally, but have a shared background, interest, or mutual connection in common with. So on LinkedIn, your first degree connections are people already in your network. Your second degree connections are people that you share a connection with. And then a third degree connection are the connections that are connected to your second grade degree connection. Super confusing when I say it, um, but this map helps to really identify what each of those then mean. So I would be saying most of the people on the call, hopefully, would be either a first degree connection or there would be a high likelihood that you would have a second degree connection or a third degree connection with each other because you've all um, studied at Western Sydney University. So that would be the common thread that always um, determines what that looks like. Research shows that your weak connections, so your second and your thirds, um, are often the most valuable for your job search um, rather than your strong existing connections because their networks are way more diverse than your own. So um, let's say, for example, my neighbour's sister works at Amazon and I've only met her once. But if I wanted to work at Amazon, she could help me find jobs there because she works there and connect me with people in my field. Um, each time you connect with someone new, their own extended network becomes more accessible to you as well. Um, any questions about network or the network? I'll keep an eye on the chat just in case someone's rapidly typing away. Um, on LinkedIn, um, when you um, connect with somebody, um, you can customise your connection request to explain why you're interested in adding a second or third degree connection, um, whether it's to learn about their career journey through an informational interview or Maybe you want to request a referral for a job um, that you're interested in. Um, most LinkedIn members often or always respond um, to a request for a referral and more than 60% of the workforce has referred someone to work at their company. 
Um, while it can feel a bit uncomfortable or sometimes nerve-wracking to connect with someone new, um, it is really a professional norm that you add in um, some information um, around why you want to connect with somebody. So my rule of thumb when it comes to building a network is give purpose into why you want to do that. Um, and I'll share a story here. Um, before I worked at LinkedIn, um, I knew that I wanted to work in the tech industry. Um, as Shamay mentioned, I worked in um, learning and organizational development previously. Um, it took me just over three years to get a job at LinkedIn. Um, I was very, very determined to get where I wanted to be. Um, and had as part of my prep, um, I had um, bucket listed, uh, I think, four or five different tech companies that I wanted to work for, LinkedIn being one of them. Um, Atlassian was one of them. Uh, Microsoft, I mean, they sound a bit cliche, but I, I knew that's what I wanted to do. Um, and then what I did is I built out um, my network to find people to mentor me. So um, I reached out to the head of organizational development at Atlassian, um, connected with them using an invitation like this, um, and um, reached out to them and ended up getting mentored by them for just over six months. Um, and it is about that purpose piece. So turning around and um, giving a bit of context around what it is that you want from that particular person or why you want to connect with them. And it could just be that you want to follow them on LinkedIn to get insights into their organization or it's a role that you want to get to in the future. So um, find people that you want to connect with and by having a secondary contact is already you're in to help you get in there. So Hey, um, I've seen that um, our mutual connection, Rob, um, uh, that we're connected through Rob. I'm currently exploring career paths in the technology industry and I really admire your experience. I'd really love to join your network. Like that's a pretty robust introduction um, to somebody and pretty compelling for someone to read um, knowing that you've got someone in common too. Um, let's have a look at discovering existing connections. So um, our AI should make recommendations based on organisations that you've worked with. Um, so if you go to the existing connections tab, you should find people based on what you've added to your profile. It'll pull contacts um, of similar roles and from that organisation that you can connect with. Um, but in addition to that, think about people that you can help expand your network. So um, my personal opinion is that you should be adding friends and family um, add current and former colleagues, um, add uh, current and former managers definitely to your profile um, and think about in your network, maybe if it isn't getting pulled in, who um, would be valuable to have on and in your network as well. Thinking about that first, second and third degree relationships and how they can help. Um, you can also then go through and search for new connections. So I'll jump into this a little bit later on if we have time and show you how you can search for new connections um, using the filters. But essentially, you can search for people in different roles. Um, you could search for learning and organizational development manager at Microsoft, for example, in Sydney um, or wherever you wanted to look. And then you could um, start by identifying different people in different roles that you might be interested in connecting with um, to learn from them or in talent acquisition teams as well. It's a really good tip. Um, after you hit connect, as always, add a note, add that note in that we just spoke about. Even if you don't have a mutual connection, um, anybody that you're connecting with, um, go through and add them a note. So when everyone adds me on LinkedIn tonight, please go through and add a note. <laughs> Um, here's my top tips for reaching out and connecting with people, um, building out your network. Um, who should you reach out to on LinkedIn? People you have something in common with, people you um, uh, share a job or work at a company that interests you, um, people who um, may be able to help you get somewhere to achieve your goals. So that might be someone in talent acquisition. It might be someone in a particular role that you're um, interested in. Um, and then what should you say? You should be saying who you are, how you came across their profile, and also how they can help you as well. Cool. Um, next one, how do you then use your network to help connect you to opportunities? So um, a few things here um, that I would definitely call out would be um, let's have a look at messaging connections, um, ask for informational interviews, request referrals, request recommendations, and let's have a look at what we can do to add value and engage. 
LinkedIn members are four times more likely to get hired when they're referred by somebody um, from an organization. And what I would recommend, you can watch this video here once we share um, the deck with you, but um, send messages um, to your connections, um, use LinkedIn messaging um, through the connections page and view their profile page as well. Um, informational interviews um, are really helpful if you're looking to find a new job. Um, or um, if you're interested in even finding someone like a mentor, um, it's a really great way for you to be able to connect with somebody, um, get advice. Um, this is what I did um, when I reached out to that person at Lassian as well. Um, so um, get some advice on your career path. Um, my particular example, I met with the head of OD um, at Atlassian. Um, I just met for a coffee, um, sat down and was like, what should I do? Where should I go? What does this look like um, as well? Um, and got some incredible advice in person, um, but you could probably do the same over chat as well. Um, the purpose of an informational interview is get advice on your career path, learn about an industry that you're really interested in, um, learn about a specific company that you'd like to work for. You can use LinkedIn to also help you do that as well. Um, but also to really help you to establish what your professional or personal um, brand or the bond is that you have with other people as well. A couple of questions. What is your recommendation for situations when you get a request to connect from a person you've never heard of with very few connections and no even close connections? Um, what would my advice be on that? Um, I would field or have a look at their profile and understand or I would ping them back a message to say hi thanks for reaching out to me um be really great to understand like why you connected with me um ask the question back um it's completely up to you whether you um accept or don't accept people and their connections um or when whether you want to completely build out the platform um that that's totally up to you as it is with any other social media platform as well um the part on security, I know it has been mentioned here, but I'll call it out anyway. Um, we've spent um, the last probably few years really upping our security um, to try and get rid of as many like scammers off the platform as, pop as possible. Um, so I, I know personally, I've seen a big decrease in the amount of people that are spamming me. Um, I would ask questions um, as to why or try to formulate what that link looks like. Uh, but send back a message and it's completely up to you um, whether you accept them or not. Cool. Um, second piece would be requesting referrals. So ask for a job referral by reaching out uh, to connections at companies. Um, so think about um, if you have a connection in common, whether that's a first or a second, um, ask them if they can refer you to a role or give you some insights into the role. Um, as some of you on the call may be aware, a lot of organisations also um, give referral bonuses for referring people. So it might be beneficial for them to refer you. Um, but 60% um, of the workforce has referred someone to work at the company. There's a good template here if you ever need them. Um, definitely you can steal these ones off the chat here as well. Um, request recommendations to build out your profile. Um, so um, you can ask former managers, um, former colleagues, um, reach out to academics um, from when you studied at Western Sydney, um, see if they can um, add some stuff in there for you as well, um, or people that have mentored you. Um, something that I would definitely recommend is that if you are asking people to recommend you on your profile, um, give them some context as to what they need to refer, or like what they should be recommending you about. So instead of me saying, hey, Charmaine, can you recommend me um, on my LinkedIn profile? Um, I would say to Charmaine, hi, Charmaine, could you please recommend me um, for the work that we did together on the Western Sydney University project and um, what we achieved and then give her some context around that instead of leaving it really vague as well. Um, four top tips around using your network. Um, invest time in your connections. So don't expect um, or take, take, take. Um, make sure that you give back to other people as well. So um, thinking about um, what that looks like for you or can you connect with 
future um, Western Sydney or uh, alumni or the grads that are currently exploring now. So what does that potentially look like for you? Um, always like and share um, things that are in your network. Um, that also helps um, get your brand out there. So by liking and sharing, it helps it to come up on other people's feeds as well. Um, join groups and exchange insights with either school or with other alumni as well. So um, we'll have a bit of an explore on what you can do and how you can connect with those people. Um, and give things like testimonials and recommendations to other people um, to really help um, give in and give out of the platform. My, some of my top tips. Um, so to get more meaningful employment, to get more opportunity out of LinkedIn, um, these are some others. Connect with alumni, faculty members and peers to grow your network. Um, tell your story on your profile and through your feed to let employers know your passions and know what makes you unique. Um, follow companies, thought leaders alike um, to stay ahead of industry and hiring trends. Um, add competencies and certifications to your profile as you learn them um, to show your, showcase your skills. Okay, so follow companies. We're going to explore these ones a little bit further and I'll go into a little bit of detail um, in actual LinkedIn um, to show you how I tend to look into each of these different things. Um, explore different schools. So go through, follow Western Sydney University, um, follow any other relevant ones that are on there as well. You can get a lot of insight into what's happening, if there's events that are happening, if there's any updates, new courses and things that are being added there as well. Um, and um, I'll go through and show you how you can use the alumni tool on, um, on LinkedIn as well, where you can connect with old classmates, um, with your academics and things like that as well. Um, I can see a question about premium in the chat as well. Um, I'll go through that once we log in um, to LinkedIn. And I'll show you the difference um, or some of the cool features that are in premium as well. And cool. Awesome. And Jeffrey, I can see um, I take the view that you're on a business page, then so make it easier for them to contact you. Yeah. Um, oh, yeah. Depending if it's your personal or business page, there's, I think, differences. Um, personal pages just make just make yourself approachable if you want to be approachable I think that's all determined on your professional brand and what you want out of the platform as well um, and then the other one is joining groups as well so I'll show you some insight into to groups um, let's have a look at posting so this is a cool way around once you have identified your brand built out your network how do you give into your network from that so two different ways to um, publish on LinkedIn one is through updates and one is publishing actual articles. Um, we'll explore these a little bit further now. So the first one is um, sharing status updates on your homepage. Um, can be a little bit of a daunting task sometimes, um, but some recommendations that I would give to you around this are um, share your authentic voice. Um, LinkedIn is a platform that you can have your voice um, being heard by your professional community. Um, try to be really authentic, stay on brand, um, whatever your brand may be, and show up consistently. Um, post frequently. By sharing frequently, you create more opportunities um, for you and your content to be discovered, which helps to really build your brand. Um, I know people, and there's a lot of people um, at LinkedIn, and, and not only that, in my professional network as well, um, that either set a calendar invite to post something once a week at different times throughout the week. Maybe it's the same time every week. Maybe it's once a month or after a particular event. Um, but think about what that frequency looks like for you. Um, the more frequently you post, the more that your personal brand and you're connecting with your network and giving something back to them. So it's definitely getting out there a lot further. Um, start a conversation. So um, the way that our algorithm works is it really reacts well to um, you asking questions of that in your network and for people to engage into your um, posts as well. Um, so pose a question, provide your perspective, um, or maybe post an article by asking a question um, that's into that post as well. And then the more people that engage with the content you post, the more it gets shared and, and the more it gets um, noticed. Um, including rich media, so things like photos and videos, 
especially videos, um, tend to help your posts to stand out more. Um, and they get more comments and more likes that you'll be able to see in your analytics as well. And when posting a status update, think of things that you can share that will benefit your professional community um, other than like, hey, I attended an event today. Like think about I attended an event today and these were my big takeaways from the event so that you're giving back and not just posting around. I went to an event today because um, what's that giving to other people that were there as well? Cool. Let's have a look at writing an article. Has anybody on here written or published an article, not a post, published an article on LinkedIn? Oh, oh there's a few of you. How good. Um, well, hopefully this will give you a bit of guidance around for anyone that wants to post one. Um, what this could look like or how you can leverage um, some of the tools. Excellent. There's a few people saying, yes, I want to do it in the future. Excellent. Um, so when you publish on LinkedIn, not only a post, but also a published article becomes part of your profile, um, which is really exciting. Um, it gets shared to your whole network and um, it also then also gets put into a talent pool um, that reaches the professionals assembled that are online as well. Um, the copyright perspective would be that if you write the article, then it's coming from your voice. So it'd be published on LinkedIn's platform and it'd be housed there. Um, okay, so a couple of best practice tips um, when it comes to publishing an article or publishing content. Um, create a headline that captures. So think about um, asking yourself if you would click on it on your busy day. Um, always great to include a photo in your article to help people um, to break up some of the content that's in there as well. Um, be authentic. So make sure you show up as your authentic self. Um, you have a lot of experience and expertise and people really want to hear about your views, your insights and your perspectives. Um, think about your audience um, before you write an article. As always, um, think about who uh, might be reading it. Um, and remember to think about um, how you can tailor your content to give back to the professional community that might be associated to maybe what you've studied or um, what's associated to what's on your profile as well. Um, and article length um, definitely matters. So you can write a long form post, but make sure it isn't too long. The sweet spot for an article is around 600 to 1,000 words. So I think what it does once you create a published content it gives the time factor that it takes someone to read it anyway. Um, but the sweet spot for an article is around 600 to 1,000 words. Um, the best part about publishing content on LinkedIn is that you have the ability to track all of the metrics and analytics that are published on your content as well. So as I mentioned, um, posts or articles, um, you can track um, what that looks like and, and who's been viewing your content as well. Um, like this. So you'll be able to go through and see where people have viewed your content from. Um, uh, clicking on the analytics tool or the view stats button um, within your published article will help pull up analytics that will help you target the professionals who can benefit most from your perspective and expertise. Track your progress regularly to see how your content resonates with your professional community. Um, uh, Charlize and Aileen, I'll try and find something and around the copyright ownership. It'll definitely be in our help centre. When we go into LinkedIn, I'll try and find where the copyright um, sits. Um, or if I can't find it today, then I'll definitely send something through um, that can be shared with you as well. But great questions. Okay, so I thought today as well, um, I'd add in some stuff at the end of this before we dive into having a bit of a play around in LinkedIn. Um, around skills, um, skills are something that is obviously um, something big that's happening in the economy at the moment. And I thought I'd share some cool insights to you. So prioritizing skills is more critical than ever because the skills needed to succeed are changing more rapidly than ever before. Um, thanks, digital transformation, global disruption, and now economic uncertainty. Um, as, a result, as a result, skills have had a half a life of approximately five years, meaning skills gained today will be half as valuable in a short span of time. Without rapid action, 
many organizations will be left with the gap in the skills that they have today and the skills that they need to succeed in the future. Is it essential um, that individuals prioritize skill development? Um, you have the potential to learn new skills and individuals are eager and excited to continually learn and grow, um, which we can already see within the 365 million skills that have been added to LinkedIn profiles within the last year. Um, experts are predicting that by 2025, there will be 12 million net new jobs that will require an entirely unique set of skills. So building an agile workforce that is encouraged and empowered to drive their own growth and change um, is a necessity, not a nice to have now. Um, start exercising your skill building muscle now um, so you can help transform your own future. Let's have a look. So I've pulled a few different pockets of skills that I thought would be insightful um, to share. So um, the first one here is the most in-demand skills for graduates um, entering the workforce. So I know that on the call, there's probably a variety of different people at a variety of different times in their career. Um, but graduates in Australia are being hired for skills. These are the most in-demand skills not just for grads, I think for um, a lot of others as well. Um, these are the top 10 skills um, that are most in demand in the current workforce and in, in this economy at the moment. And then in addition to that, um, I've compiled some lists of dependent on industry, um, looking into some of the fastest growing skills that we here at LinkedIn would be suggesting um, that you could start focusing on um, because in each of these different industries, these are the, the ones that um, we've seen the greatest movement um, with over time, so over the last year. Um, so um, like I said, we're going to share all of this with you, but I thought it'd be a cool insight for you um, in each of your different roles or wherever you are in life to be able to turn around and say, okay, great. In the future, I'm looking at, or maybe currently I'm working in technology, information and media, um, these are some areas that I might want to start having a bit of a think about focusing on um, in, de in developing skill in at the moment as well. So um, I'd probably pick one, one or two um, that you could start focusing on. So um, these are the different industries, technology, information and media, administration and support services, manufacturing, government administration, um, consumer industries, professional services, construction and education and I'll add in financial services so I'll just quickly write that down because I should have added that one in as well um and if there's anything else um just let your team and the alumni team know and I'll see what I can do um to help out but um some great ones to start thinking about um that you could potentially be focusing on um obviously if anyone has a premium membership or um, is a current student of um, WSU um, or maybe your organisation has access to LinkedIn Learning as well. Um, you can learn a lot of these in-demand skills on LinkedIn Learning as well. So LinkedIn Learning has a variety of different skills that you can start to focus on. Okay, that's done from a presentation perspective. Let me stop here and... Um, Bevan said, are the metrics you're showing available for people with standard LinkedIn memberships? Um, let's have a bit of a look into that. I'm just going to unshare this um, screen. <laughs> and now I'm going to see everyone's messaging me on LinkedIn as well as I'm opening it up. Um, let me open up my screen. And if there's anything in particular anyone really wants to focus on here, please pop it in the chat. Um, but I thought I'd show you through a few cool things um, in LinkedIn. Um, the profile views, you should be able to have a look at. So it's so hard when you have, um, let me have a quick look in here. So this is on my profile. So the first question maybe we'll go through is on premium. Premium, um, you can pay for access for or you can also do a 14 day, day trial um i would always recommend if you're applying for a new job then i would definitely um recommend um using um uh your profile using your um your free trial or paying for like a month of profile but totally up to you 
um, I'll show you a few of the features um, that come into um, into uh, premium. Sorry, um, mine as well. I know there's a gift on there. That's um, the LinkedIn. We um, get some extra things here at LinkedIn. Um, you have the ability to be able to send more emails to people without connecting to them. So you get a series of credits that you means without befriending someone on or connecting with someone on LinkedIn, you can actually go through and send people uh, uh, emails instead of having to connect with them. You can see more detail into who's viewed your profile as long as they have a public profile. Um, but you might be able to see <coughs> their um, <laughs> their role or where they're based. <coughs> Sorry, one second. <coughs> you get access to LinkedIn Learning, which is also incredible. You get company insights into different companies. I'll show you this one. Give me this one second. Okay, I'll wait for that to load and I'll keep on going through. Um, these ones are also here as well. So you can have a bit of a play around with what premium means to you, depending on where you're at, but it can help you build your resume. You can help um, look at interview prep. Um, I think a lot of the insights that I personally use it for would be things like um, jumping through and having a look at like for example not that I'm applying for jobs but if you were to apply for a job for example let's say um this particular role here what you can do is down the bottom of each of your job posts you can actually go through and see um using your premium features where you sit um in comparison to other people um the skills that you might need to start developing or what they're asking for um, a bit of an understanding around who's applying for those different jobs um, and like a little bit of company, company information as well. Um, so here's, yeah, just a bit of an e example of um, some premium features when it comes to applying for jobs as well. Um, okay, I'll show you some stuff around the alumni tool is probably a good one. So Western Sydney University, search it over here. There is a um, good plug for the alumni team here. Um, is um, click on, um, you'll be able to connect with the Western Sydney alumni um, group um, or as a person. But what you can do is so um, search Western Sydney University to start off with, click on uh, their homepage. And then once you're in here, you'll see this little tool here called alumni. So we'll click on that one. And Thinking back to our first, second and third degree um, network, what you could do here is let's say my goal was to work at Amazon. I can then search through Western Sydney alumni from a certain perspective. Oh, that was not, oh, it's probably pulling up skills. Let's say I want to connect with people that are customer success managers and have a bit of a play around with the search field that's on here. But there's 378 alumni um, from 2015 to 2023 um, that are customer success managers. So if that's a role um, that I want to go into, um, that's definitely a, a good starting point. What you can then do is have a bit of a play around with um, where your connections are. Um, where they studied. Um, you can even have a play around with where they've worked. So let's have a look at maybe, let me try and think of, oh, here, there's all these companies here. Um, PwC, for example, if my goal is to work at PwC, I can actually bring up um, all of the alumni that work at PwC and I could connect with this person here and say, hi, I'm interested in connecting with you in the future. I'm interested in connecting with you. I know that you work at PwC or that you've worked at PwC. Um, I'd be interested to get some advice or something like that from you as well. I can see that we both study at Western Sydney University. So it's a great way to be able to connect with people and use Western Sydney University as your connector. 
um, for an introduction um, of what's in common. That one's a good one. Um, in terms of groups, there's so many groups on LinkedIn that you can go through and have a look at. So um, on the left-hand side, uh, Raj, yes, definitely. Um, I would be, if you're looking for it, a particular, just be mindful if you're connecting with someone from talent acquisition, add purpose, not be like, hi, I would like a job at X company. Um, I worked in HR prior um, to working at LinkedIn. Um, what I would say is um, connect with them with purpose. So like, hi, um, if there isn't a role currently going, um, it'd be great to set up some time with you to discuss um, this role or um, do you have any upcoming roles or something along those lines. But I would always, probably if I was looking at, uh, when I was looking for a job at LinkedIn, I followed not only people in talent acquisition, but people in the role that I wanted to be in as well, because it helped give me a lot of insight into the organization. Talent acquisition teams also tend to, um, they're the ones that post the roles. Um, so their name will come up on LinkedIn as the poster. And if you can have, like, they'll see that you're a connection of theirs, which is always helpful as well. So I would say, yes, uh, go for it. Um, groups are on the side here. Um, you can go through and search and have a look at all of the different groups that you um, that you could even create your own group as well. Um, but there's heaps of different ways that you can connect and have a look. So depending on what type of group you want to have a look at, so you can see all of these ones that I've added in here, you can click on, let's say, mentorship, and then I want to search by, or let's say mentors, let's say women in tech. Um, you can then go through and I could go through and have a look at what are all of these different groups that I might want to start to connect with um, for this particular um, this search field as well. That's a good one. Um, anything else from anyone that they want me to go through? I know we're nearly at time. It goes very quickly. Oh, I can show you. Uh, I, this was a question. I don't, it is on premium. So a premium feature is also um, your posts. So having a look at um, people that viewed your profile, but then I think that I shared with you before around your post impressions. Oh, no, it's not. It is um, It is available to all of you. Um, so um, analytics and tools that come from posts. Um, so I posted some stuff this week um, because I was um, running some events for a few different universities um, and I've added them into here. Um, we have a mode called creator mode um, that I would encourage you to have a play around with because it helps your post to reach more and you can, for you to get these analytics. So when you go into your profile, you should see like a little button that says uh, creator mode um full version does look very different to the app and the full version has more features than the app does as well so you have a lot more compatibility on the uh desktop version versus the app version um but then there's a few things on the app version that aren't available on the full version which is a little bit strange um the app version you can record your name um or it, in your native language or in english as well um, and you can like for the pronunciation of it, which is um, super cool. Um, this is on my laptop. It's just on a shared screen. So if that's um, helpful, um, it is um, just very, very wide on my screen. For creatives using portfolios. Yes, definitely. I would say, still say build out your network. Um, definitely for a creative, I've done a bit of uh, quite a bit of work with creative industries at universities. And um, I would definitely use the same format of creating and building out your network with creatives as well, um, especially if you're um, an entrepreneur or you're owning your own business and you're looking at building out your network. It's the purpose piece that you have to really add in there as well. So um, I'll show you some stuff on analytics on your posts. I'll bring up, um, let me just find, here is a post that I ran last week. Um, a couple of things that you can go through. So underneath your post here, you'll see this little button that says view analytics. 
And then you can start to get a bit of an understanding around um, who's engaging with your content, um, the difference between engagements. Uh, I'll talk through impressions. Impressions is something that comes up on someone's feed versus like this post, I'm going to say only, only had 25 reactions to it and four comments. But the impressions piece is how and what does your reach look like on that post? So I'll show you a difference between two different posts. So this one had 1,300 impressions. You can get a bit of an overview uh, over um, this one. Um, but then in comparison to another post that I did, you can start to go through and start to see what the difference is between some of these posts as well. So um, this was another post that I did last week. And the impressions are not as high, but the, yeah, the, you can start to get a bit of an idea around who's viewing your content, um, where people are viewing it and what your reach looks like for them as well. Um, but I think you have to activate creator, which is free. Just click on creator um, and it just helps expand your network um, and your post to get out there a little bit more. Um, uh, yes, definitely. You get way more engagement on posts when you post more frequently. Um, and the purpose of that is because of um, these suggested posters or when you see, let me try and find this. I'm not going to be able to find one now. It's not coming up. Or like this one, like someone contributed to this or um, this person liked this particular post. So even by liking posts, what that's doing is like, I don't know who this person is. But because someone in my content, uh, in my uh, my connections has liked this, it's expanded their network and my network to connect me to it because it's identified that these things are things that I should be interested in. Hopefully that makes sense. Um, recommendation of frequency. Sorry, is the other one. Um, depending on depending on what what like what you want to achieve through LinkedIn, I think. Um, uh, depending on whether it's business or whether it's personal, um, I would say, or yeah, I can't, I can't even answer it. It really depends on the person. Um, I, I am not frequent enough. My goal would be to, to post maybe once a week or once every two weeks um, or once a month would probably a good, be a good target for me. I'm really inconsistent with my posting at the moment and it's probably something that I need to be better at. So I'll start with once a month, then hopefully it'll go to once a fortnight and then hopefully it'll go to once a week. Um, but I, I more want meaningful posts is probably what I, um, things that are authentic to me. So good question. Um, anything else from anyone that I can show you that I can jump in here and we can have a look at? Um, follow influencers, follow organizations. Sorry, that was the other thing that's still loading over here. So let's say an organization, let's go Microsoft. Um, the benefit that you get by following organizations is um, if you have premium, you can go through and have a look at um, some more insights that are sitting over here about the organization. Um, but I found when I was looking for roles, um, that it was helpful to be able to follow um, organizations because you get a really good idea around what their organization is like. Um, these little things that sit in here, um, the life page, I don't know if you've ever looked at an organization's life page, but if you're ever looking for a job somewhere, um, you get a bit of an idea around um, what some of the benefits are working there. So um, organizations build out these life pages um, to help to give you an idea of what it looks like, but also things like posts um, really um, help you uh, to follow that. Um, Brian, I don't know if I can share that one, Brian, I know I shared something with um, you guys before. There's lots of cool and exciting um, features that have been added into um, LinkedIn all the time um, that um, we are always building on our platform. Um, as you're probably aware, generative AI is a big focus of ours here at LinkedIn, um, along with our parent company, Microsoft. So hopefully in the future, we'll see some stuff added in around um, AI built into the platform. Um, since, like I shared before, since I've worked at LinkedIn, um, the platform has significantly advanced um, in the way that it's put together, um, the way that it helps to build out your feed and things like that as well. 
um, my big top tips were if you are going through and building out a platform, use the intuition that the platform will help you to do. It will make recommendations for you. Um, add in licenses and certifications um, and keep them current instead of having to do a big dump of having to do them at one time. So if you've got LinkedIn learning, add your licenses, add your skills as you're learning them so that you don't have to sit there and have to build it out as you go along um, all the time as well. Um, keep it an ongoing project, I think, as well. Um, Aileen, um, you said clients rather than employers. Are there any different tips? Um, uh, as in using it for business purposes rather than employers, like uh, reaching out to potential markets and things like that? Is that what you're referring to? Um, if it's from a business perspective, um, I would always recommend um, that you define your brand, obviously. Keep your posts consistent more than your personal posts um, and think about what's exciting for your audience. Um, and utilize, I, I think from what it does, it builds out your, it helps you build out your brand to stay consistent from that. Um, yeah, I don't, I, let me, let me have a think about it. Let's see if there's anything else I can add with you. Aileen, if you add me on LinkedIn, like please anyone, um, I'll pop this quickly in the chat for anyone that's jumping off. Um, but, um, if you have any other questions, let me know and I'll see what I can find for you as well. Cool. Thank you so much, Amy. This has been amazing. I know I've learned a lot. <laughs> Thanks. Love it. Thank you. Thanks very much for joining. Thank you, everyone, for joining. Um, I think one of the big takeaway messages is obviously connect with our alumni team on LinkedIn yep. if you haven't yep. already. So Western Sydney University alumni, just going to put another plug in there. Um, I just want to let everyone also know that we will be sharing the recording tomorrow um, with some takeaway messages. Um, I'm also going to be distributing an ev evaluation for this series. So we'd love to hear what you thought about it, um, ideas for future series. Um, as I said, we definitely want to keep connected um, and keep the lifelong career education happening. So we'll be in touch with you soon. And again, thank you, Amy. Really thank you for your time. It was amazing. Super welcome. Thanks, everyone. Have a great evening, day ahead. Thank you.